Hey, hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and on today's video I'm going to be talking about the Ryzen 3700X, this little gem over here. But before we talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about the history of this CPU. And as you know, in 2017, AMD introduced the Ryzen series of CPU. AMD was coming from a very bad situation, financially speaking. They were not producing very good CPUs. And when they came into the market with the Ryzen series, they kind of disrupted the market because at, until that point, Intel was selling like normal four core, eight thread CPUs as the base. And then the eight core CPUs were sold as a, at a premium price. So Ryzen came and changed all that by changing the whole concept of the CPU and created like a um, chiplet design that allows for um, different more cores to be in place and interconnected between them. So the pre the first problem Ryzen had is that it disrupted the market by offer by offering A cores and more at a very good prices compared to Intel but they were not the fastest CPU for gaming core per core. They were very good when they, uh, you know, a game using more cores, but in 2017, you know, most games didn't actually use four or six cores, so they were not very helpful there. However, they were very helpful for productivity. So if you were like me, for example, uh, you know, creating videos, making videos and so on, and also gaming, well, they were the best of both worlds. If you wanted the best gaming performance, they were not, the uh, the option at least not at the beginning they soon released the next series which was the 2000 series of cpu where the 2600 and the 27 2700 i believe were very popular but they were carrying still some of the issues of the first generation of the ryzen series don't get me wrong they were very popular and many people started to jump to ryzen when that happened but they were not the fastest gaming cpu around or at least not in terms of price performance because they were more of a all-around cpus very good for productivity editing video you know compression and all of those things because of the so many cores but each core was not very fast and then the communication between each one of the chiplets because it depended on the ram was not the greatest and also at the beginning there were a lot of issues with the BIOS and the uh, RAM communication, RAM compatibility. So it took a while for them to uh, lift off. However, then when they released this 3000 series, that's where I think AMD nailed it. And actually it, it, it was like when everybody jumped to AMD, Intel enthusiasts, everybody, because they were offering and they fixed most of the problems of the previous series in terms of CPU performance per core, and they were extremely affordable and very good for gaming. So the question I'm making today, are they still good for gaming today? Because many games, you know, we as gamers are always chasing that, you know, oh, we, I want the next fastest thing. Um, we are on Ryzen 7000 right now. So how is the Ryzen 3700? in 2024 is it still a viable option is it good because the ryzen 3000 is basically the same cpu that uh you know same generation that the actual uh consoles uses and and the reason i'm using this uh for testing is because i think it's one of the more balanced cpus that came out even though i think right now the most um probably popular cpu choice for many is the 5800 x 3d i think that the 37x still has a lot to offer especially because you can get it on the used market for between 50 and 100 dollars which from my point of view is a steal for an eight core 16 thread cpu as good as this one but now the there is another reason why this became so incredibly popular and not just because they were very good but because amd did something amazingly right that it was given support to the am4 socket where the uh, ryzen 1000 launch up to this day seven years later am4 is still supported and there are still cpus going to come out even though we have am5 already out for a couple of years already so that made a lot of people that they gave the capacity to a lot of people to jump easily from the ryzen 1000 series to the 2000 to the 3000 and even to the 5000 series and that is one of the most amazing things that uh, that socket is going to go in history as probably one 
of the best socket ever made because the support has been incredible and even if you had a first generation motherboard a decent one and i did one i have one first generation you can still use the latest cpu without having to update your motherboard this i never seen anything like that that lasted for seven years so i can use a ryzen 5800 x3d on my x370 motherboard and that is just so amazing and that's what made this one of the best and that's why i'm testing this today because you can get a if you already have am4 and you have like a fair uh, what first or second generation CPU or you want to update or want to buy a new system you can get them for cheap like the motherboard used or even new for very cheap and they use DDR4 which is ridiculously cheap nowadays so you can have a very powerful PC with a CPU like this for not much more than two hundred dollars or even less so that's why today i want to see how good is the 3700x in 2024 ah but one second before we get to that i have to say two things to you the first one is please like subscribe and share it to help me grow and bring more content like this but the second one is that to test cpu is not an easy proposition you know many of the testing of cpus that many channels do are flawed but at the same time they are kind of right in what sense where if you are comparing apple to apple like one cpu to another you want to have all the metrics exactly the same because at the end of the day all you're trying to say is which one which cpu is actually faster than the other so you put the same metrics to everyone to everything you set the 4090 and you set the resolution at 1080p or something like that because all you're testing here is the uh, CPU speed and that's important if all you care is about FPS you are trying to see how much FPS you can get and you're going to see what uh, what I'm talking about when we see some of the examples but the biggest problem is that even though resolution doesn't affect the CPU that much there are settings in the graphing menu that will affect CPU performance like for example LOD or uh, the um, view distance because there is more geometry on the screen and that affects the CPU performance so I can test the gate on 1080p low but i wouldn't actually be giving you the you know a, like a real perception of how good or bad the cpu is because uh, we are going to be you know not straining the cpu as much but if i use very high i'm going to also be you know putting too much strain in some cases because maybe you are not going to play like that because you have a mid-tier gpu the other problem is ray tracing ray tracing uses a lot of cpu power and so that means that when we play on uh, with ray tracing on anything depending on the resolution that will affect the cpu performance because the more resolution the more pixels need to be traced and that means that the cpu is going to have to work harder so you know it's not that easy or i hope i have made an like a, a, a very mixed set of tests here to show you how good this cpu is in 2024 so let's start with cyberpunk 2077 because there is so many different options here that we can start full exploring the cpu so here on with 1080p dlss balance ultra settings we can already see that this cpu can achieve around 100 fps no issues whatsoever around 90 to 100 and this is obviously without ray tracing and we can see that the gpu is not being fully utilized so we know the gpu is not being a bottleneck here and that of course ultra settings if there is a low settings we could potentially get even more um frames depending if any of those settings affect directly the cpu when we go to ray tracing ultra i'm keeping the same dlss and everything we can still see that the cpu is not the gpu is not being fully utilized but the cpu seems to have reached the limit of what it's capable to do in this situation with ray tracing on that shows you that even when the gpu is not the bottleneck the cpu could be because it has to calculate a lot of more other things so we still have some in areas to improve in terms of GPU because we have around 10% available but the CPU is the one that is struggling with all the data so but even in this case the 3700 is able to give you at least 60 FPS now in overdrive I, I uh, um, downloaded the quality of the LSS performance I downgraded sorry and um, and in this case we can see once again we are not having a GPU bottleneck in this case but the CPU is not able to give us anything more I think overdrive and 
RT Ultra are probably the same in terms of CPU utilization. So we can see here that those settings tends to affect the CPU. However, we can see that even in these extreme hard cases, the 3700X is capable of delivering around 60 FPS. Yes, it's going to go down sometimes, but I think this CPU is showing to be more than capable. Now, one of the latest game and testing is Hellblade, which uses Nanite, Lumen, and is under latest Unreal Engine 5. And you can see here that using DLSS, uh, 1080p DLSS Ultra Performer on the high setting, we can get to around 70 FPS, 75 FPS. But I think the GPU here is causing a little bit of a bottleneck, so probably we could go a little bit further, um, even though it's not 100% utilization, as you can see there probably we had a little bit more leeway we could get a couple of more frames or you know some more uh frames out of the game however we have to say that because nanite is very uh, geometry intensive for example when we put the game on low you can see that we get some more performance out of the game now we are getting a little bit more uh, out of it not too much but we are getting more which shows you once again and you can see that the gpu now is very underutilized and uh, like a 75 to 80 percent that in this case the uh, rtx 3700 x is giving everything it can so uh, so far it's a very capable cpu that is going to give you a very uh, good uh, frame rate but this is not a cpu made for you to play the latest triple a games like at 120 144 or more fps but it will get you to the 60 that we all want now i'm not going to be playing ghost of tsushima but i'm going to show you you something very interesting here at the moment we are at 1080p dlss quality high settings gpu is only 70 percent and cpu is around 30 percent and you can see we get around every 84 fps now look what happens when i change dlss from balance to ultra performance to quality from to from quality to ultra performance you can see there we are actually not getting anything more that's it. so it's not you can see how the gpu has gone very low in utilization but we are not getting any more fps and that's because this is as much as the rt uh, the horizon 7 3700x is capable of doing on these settings uh with this gpu so you are never going to get more than 100 no matter what gpu you are using and even when we go to very high now, when we go back to the game, you can see that we're essentially at the same. For some reason, a little bit more, but still, we are not very far away or very far ahead. We are still keeping around 90 to 85 to 90 FPS. So the settings are very high, are not very different from high, and the resolution or DLSS is not helping. However, when we go to very low, then that's when we see a different situation because we have gone from around 84 to 98, that's 14 FPS more, which shows you that there is is some space to grow but that because some of the settings are actually affecting the cpu we already established that the gpu still has a lot of power but in this case where the cpu is being affected by some settings now if you want to check how do we check what settings are affecting and we can see that these are going to be all geometry related as you can see there i'm changing uh, terrain detail it's not doing much but if we're going to uh, level of detail look what happens when i start changing it look we go to very high and it goes down to 90 something of course if we go back to the game it will be on uh, lower also shadow quality is going to affect because of the distance at which I had to draw the shadow so even though those seems to be gpu related they also affect somehow the cpu and this is of course going to be exacerbated when we are playing at higher resolutions even if it's not at the same level than other areas going to affect the cpu so this i think is an interesting experiment to see if how the gpu sometimes or the, your cpu is not going to give you more no matter what you do when you are already at certain settings but anyway my point here is that once again the 37x is giving you excellent performance and the same can be said when we test horizon forbidden west which is one of those games that is open world lots of things happening on the screen and you can see that if we are almost close to max out the gpu but this is around what the 37X is going to give you, another 80 to 90 FPS. So I will say that anyone wanting to play or that their target is 60 or 60 to 75 FPS, the 37X is going to give you excellent performance because we can see how each system 
how each game has run around those areas and that's because probably this is the same target that uh, the 37x is even better than the uh, uh, current gen consoles now a game that is very cpu demanding is starfield and that's one of the reasons i think the xbox didn't want to release before uh, at 60 fps because it never really reaches 60 fps even with the 37x there are points where you are going to go down as you can see in with dlss performance and on high settings sometimes you can hit even 45 or 50 fps and remember this cpu is more powerful than the cpu used on both current gen consoles so once again it's one of those situations where the 37x is giving you good performance but also that not everything is about graphics and you can see here for example when we go to the settings and i'm going to lower the settings from high to medium and you are going to see that there is really basically no difference because it's not the graphics the problem because the gpu is not being fully utilized is because this is as much as the cpu can give you in this situation so you know that this being a very heavy game is going to struggle a little bit on some titles but i still you got the 60 fps that is the same situation we're getting in avatar which is again that runs rt um effects even if you don't have an rt card okay so it's based on rt and ray tracing and so on so you can see here that it's running extremely well with the 3700x uh, and even though we are using 70 around 70 percent of it but it's still giving you more than 60 fps in this situation while not being gpu limited so this is very good news for anyone wanting to build a computer with this what i consider an extremely good cpu well if you have seen uh the Ryzen 3700X is a CPU that is still very capable. I won't say that if you want the fastest CPU, like for, you know, play at 120 or 240 FPS, this is not the CPU for you, depending on the game. But most new AAA games are not going to give you that with this CPU. However, if all you care is about hitting that 60 FPS sweet spot, I think there is a lot of life left in this CPU, especially because, as I said at the beginning, this CPU is essentially better than the CPUs that are on the net and the current gen console that means that any games that run at 60 on those consoles you're going to be able to run them at 60 on your PC GPU depending of course but the CPU is not going to be the bottleneck so that's very important because you already have a CPU that is going to last you at least as long as the uh, uh, current consoles do but i think the cpu is a very well round cpu for productivity for video for editing streaming and for gaming as you can see we can achieve those 60 fps and more on most of the game even with ray tracing on so for my money if you get this cpu between 50 and 100 dollars of course it depends on your country i know that but no i still think if you can get it for cheap this is a very good investment for any pc that you're trying to build depending on how much you're saving of course if you're going for the best of the best this is not it but for any reasonable computer that you're going to be building today okay that you already have the motherboard or you got a used motherboard or it was an old computer you got with a am4 socket with the ryzen 1000 or 3000 or anything like that and you don't want to spend much on it this is still a fabulous cpu that i will definitely recommend to anyone so as always if you like this video please like and subscribe share it and as usual see you on the next video